any sort of deprecated function. We are only going to use functions that are uh, currently stable. So one of the functions that were actually deprecated in this function uh, in this current um, current version is the create client. But we are not going to use that. We are going to use create server. So what's the difference between the create create client and the create server? Let's have a look. So we are now inside this create server functions definition. So this create server uh, function definition is telling us that it will require require one single argument that will be a request listener. And if you look at the HTTP create client, it will require two arguments. One is the port and the host. But this uh, client create client function or method has been deprecated. You see that stability is zero, deprecated. You must use HTTP request instead. So it, what it does, it creates, it used to create a client and it was used to send in a request to the server. Now it has been deprecated. We do not need to use that. So let us focus on to the HTTP create server function. So this function will take in some will take in a single argument. So if we head back to the script, we see that we are providing a function. Now you can do something like this. If it's too confusing for you, let's copy this. Let's erase this off. And then let's create a function like this. And now we cannot create any anonymous function. We will have to create um, a named fun a function that has got an identifier. Let's call this something as maybe a server function. Okay. So this server, so this server function, and then uh, we can reference that server function from our create server um, from our create server. Uh, method. I, I guess it gets a little easier for you to read this code, but for the uh, fa for the fact that we need to keep our program as concise as possible, that's why we should go for the anonymous function. That will in reduce, you know, some file sizes, and it will also reduce the number of lines that we need to write. But if you feel comfortable enough that you you can go for this method, you can go for this function, then you should go for this. And if you feel that it's too confusing for you, then I guess you might avoid the anonymous use uh, anonymous function inside your create server method. But let me stick to the stick to the usage of anonymous function because that's actually the standard way. Now we are passing in one single argument which is a function, an anonymous function. Now this function is quite interesting. Why is it interesting? Because inside that function we get two new arguments. One is called the request and the other one is called uh, and the other one is called as the response. Now this request and response are actually also objects by themselves. What is the difference between this object and this object? This object is calling in all the API, all the tools to build up the server. And this object will be triggered in specific timings. They will have specific timings and you will have to end those objects by yourself, which means you will have to kill those objects in pl plain English. So what what this request does is that let's imagine that we have got an we have got a visitor who is sitting back, who is sitting on a browser and he wants to browse your site and you, you, your site and obviously he will have to uh, he will have to access your site through the browser so he opens up his browser and then he types in your address some sort of address but the thing that goes behind the scene is not shown to us. The browser doesn't actually tell us what's happening behind the scene. It just tells you that it's working on the page and then after it finds the page and then it shows you the page. But what happens in Node's terminology is that after the visitor has requested or typed in the address of your website and hit enter, then 
this request object will be initiated or it will be started. When this request object has begun or when, this, when, the, when the user or the visitor has initiated the process or when the user has called or requested the page, this request object will get initiated and this object, as it, be, as it uh, because this is an object, it will obviously have its own methods and properties. We'll be looking at that as we develop this example. We'll, this is a simple example, but as we go along, we will develop this into a complex web application. So we will actually work with examples in this entire series so that you can, it will become easier for you to develop your own application. But ju just uh, don't think that you can only know this just, a, know this just a platform for web development. No, it's not. You can actually create cross-platform software or application that will run as standalone application on a single machine. You can actually do that, but I'm not going to discuss that right now in here. Now, let's look at the response object. This is an object too. So when do we get this response object? After the browser of the visitor triggers this request or the visitor or the browser requests, sends a request to your server, which means it will send a request to the simple server. Then your server will start reading that request. So when it re starts reading that request, it will see that you, uh, your, it, it will see that you as the visitor is requesting a, 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 an, an HTML page. So when it sees that it has got the appropriate response, or when it sees that, or the server sees that it has got the appropriate page, then it's going to trigger this response.